My name is Karen Malaka and um, I'm from Cavan, a small county in Ireland. I'm a nurse myself, but my area and interest in disabilities is my son was born 24 years ago. Um, at that stage, uh, he wasn't really had, didn't really have a diagnosis. So 24 years ago, things were very, very different in Ireland. Leah would have been older than Ben, so she would have been affected as an older child with a younger uh, so, uh, child with disabilities. And Brian is younger than Ben, so he knew all his life nothing. They learned to accept it, to have to live with it, to see how it did affect them growing up. Um, Friends-wise, maybe people wouldn't come to the house. They felt they couldn't bring people to the house, particularly as a younger children. But nowadays, there's much more acceptance of it. Twenty-four years ago when Ben was born, there was nothing wrong with Ben. Ben, I was told, I was told I was the over-anxious mother, there was nothing wrong with child. But I knew, I had an older child, I had Leah, that things weren't right, that he wasn't developing. There was no services provided. Ben didn't get early intervention until he was six. Six years is too late for early intervention. At the age of six, they come out of child disability services now and they actually enter children, children's services. From naught to six is early intervention. After six, six to 18 is child services and 18 adult. So Ben missed that window of opportunity, the window where they grow, develop, they learn, the children go to preschool, they learn so much in the formative years. He did not have it. So therefore he got no help till it was too late. And then when he got help, it was nearly minimalistic because he'd missed those early years. So he never really did catch up. Things like this bring a focus, they keep it in light, they keep it out there, they keep it not only on the ground, but they keep it at a political level and a higher level. So awareness is always there. It's lack of awareness is ignorance. I think if you're aware of something, you're not as ignorant. And I think all those years ago, there was lack of awareness. And children years ago, when they weren't right, was put in a corner. You know, they were nearly shamed upon. That is gone. And help is very much the fort now. There is more help, but yes, you may have to look for it. You may have to look for more, but I think you will at least get into access to services. They're very different no matter where you are. But once you get access into services, at least you have a start and a foothold. You may not get everything you want. You may not even get half what you want, but you have a contact, you have a basis, you have someone to turn to. We had no one to turn to and no one to look for help. And I think every parent of every child, when they need help, be it a doctor, be it a nurse, be it a teacher, should be able to at least look for help. What comes back the other end is what is available, but at least you're on someone's books and not on no one's. I would say I'm optimistic about the future in the sense that it's now a normal topic of conversation. People are much more aware of acceptance. I think it has to though, maybe come back to coming at a younger level. I think awareness needs to be in the schools. I think it needs to maybe part of the curriculum more than it ever was. Now national schools and that do take on, they do have, sorry, children with disabilities in them now more than they would have had before. They have wheelchair use. So children are acceptance of other children now, but that needs to progress and not come to a stage where it's dropped. So I think if the government put it into our national curriculum throughout, then these are the future adults that's coming. So therefore disability is just like anything else. It is the norm. But money needs to be pumped into it from the government. There definitely needs to be more services. There definitely needs to be more access. Um, there needs to be more jobs created. There needs to be more acceptance within the workplace. Because you have a disability doesn't mean you can't do something. It just needs tweaking around it. But I do think we are in a better place. Ben accompanied me myself and my other son Brian, who is a mental health nurse, came with us to Cyprus. And although Ben is non-verbal and he has an intellectual disability, I knew Ben knew this was about him. It wasn't about me going or it wasn't about his brother. This was all about Ben. And Ben came to every day of the conference in, Cy in Cyprus and he made great friends. And the first day we were there, he spotted um, one of the participants there. He didn't know who she was. 
and she spotted him and they instantly made a bond. Even though he was non-verbal and she was verbal. And to this day, if I show him a picture, he will name who that person is. And he knew every morning when I'd say where we're going. And he's, he, he was able to, in his simple language, explain to me where we're going. When we would sit down and you'd look at Ben and you'd ask Ben, I knew he knew what this was all about. But to see Ben out there, to see him included in something, because the AAA project is about enablism, and Ben was unable to go. And I was so proud of him. So proud that he took part in this because it is about him and others with disabilities.